Hello, my friends. Welcome back. My name is Lucas, and this is the Lucas Yarns YouTube channel. I hope you're doing well. Today, I come to you with a tutorial on how I create a rectangular granny square. So let's just dive right into it. You see on your screen here a regular reg uh, granny square, just your average show, nothing fancy granny square. I chained two in the corners. I did not chain between the clusters. This was made with Red Heart Super Saver and a five millimeter hook. I flipped between each row to keep it from turning. So we have almost a true square here, friends. Uh, and I did weave in the ends. So you, you know how much I love you guys on YouTube if I weaved in my ends. <laughs> Especially for an example. So uh, this is your basic granny square. But sometimes you want to make a rectangle. And I have seen a number of ways of doing this on the YouTube streets. Uh, the more common ones are going to be making two of these basic grannies and then stitching them together on one side and then continuing on around the outside of both squares connected together. I've also seen a method where you chain like 30 and you do clusters on the top of the chain, you make a corner and then you do clusters on the bottom of the chain, make a corner and connect it into the rectangular shape using that long chain. But that looks funny. That doesn't look like this. And it's always bugged me, so I don't do it that way. The method that I use is a method that I was taught by my aunt as she was teaching me how to crochet. And I want to show you what that looks like. This is not achieved by chaining uh, and making clusters on either side of the chain. No, 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 friends. This is done like a normal granny square without any extra step except except friends you're going to add some clusters on the sides to make them longer and then you can either choose to cinch this center together and close it up and make it look more consistent to this one or you can leave this open and you'll have a little oval in the middle of your blanket i'll let you decide how you choose to do this piece in the center that's entirely up to you and your style and what you're trying to make i'll show you both examples because the one that we're about to make uh, here on the video, I won't cinch in the center and then you'll see what that looks like as well. So a couple of notes here. Uh, I do have a diagram for us to follow because it's helpful to do this the first few times that you make a rectangular granny square like this. Uh, and I do want to note, this will look a little wavy, a little funky, a little weird the first time you do this and with a couple of rows in, and as you make a larger square here, this will flatten out and you'll see the rectangular piece come together more, more easily as you work more on this blanket. The smaller squares will always be a little, a little wavy and uh, it's not going to look as rectangular when you compare it to the, the regular granny square as it would if you continued the blanket and made it larger so this works best in my opinion you can do whatever you want it's your yarn uh in my opinion this works best if this is a continuous granny that you continue to make larger and larger as you work through the process uh, i will be making one of these on the channel very soon using some of the scrap yarn from the roll the dice blanket so let's begin. Let's dive into this. I want to talk a couple seconds about the structure of the regular granny square. I'm going to leave that there for the camera to focus uh, because we've got a couple things to think about as we work through this process, right? The regular granny square, you're going to have your clusters in the corner and then the chains between the clusters, right? Whether you do two chains in your corners, three chains, 17 chains, or maybe these are triple crochets, maybe these are half double crochets, whatever the choice is, just talking about the formula, not the actual stitching, doesn't really matter too much, except for the foundation of this rectangular granny square, because the difference is going to be the center and where you put those chains for the corners, those extra chains for those corners. So let's look at the diagram for the rectangular granny. When comparing to our example, I'll flip the example here so you can see it as well, right? You have one chain in the center on each side, or one cluster on the center in each side, and then you have a corner that goes around, and then you have a cluster here, right? And then another cluster here, another cluster here, and then you have another corner situation, right? The difference between the, rec the regular granny square and the rectangle granny in this style is where you're putting those chains for the corners and how you're positioning 
that first round. So let's let's walk through this process with an example. I'll leave my diagram here so we can reference it as we move through the process. As we walk through the original chain of the granny square, you'll notice we have more clusters here that we have to create. We're creating eight clusters versus the four in this one. So we need bigger space in that original chain. That being said, for the original chain here in the center, we're gonna chain 10. It's gonna sound a little crazy, but you need the space for all of this stuff to flatten out. So let me grab my yarn here. I'm going to chain 10. Nine, as soon as I put the yarn back on the hook, oops, without splitting it preferably. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We're gonna slip stitch to make that a circle just like we do in a regular granny square. All right. Now for this example, and this example alone, yours might be different. Your formula for a granny square might be different than mine and I appreciate that, right? But for this example specifically, I'm gonna chain three here. That's gonna count as my first double crochet in my very first cluster, right? And I'm gonna do two more and I'm going to work over my tail to start to weave that in as we go through that first round. One double crochet and two double crochet for that first cluster. Now let's reference our example. If we're in the top here, right, I need to do two chains in the cluster. Looking here in our example. Cluster here, two chains, a cluster right there. I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see what I'm talking about, right? I have the cluster here, I have my corner, and then I have the cluster here. In this instance, you can even do three chains to differentiate your corner between them. I'm gonna go ahead and do that in this example so we can see what that looks like in this piece. That also might help flatten it out a little bit as we work through this process. So I've done my first cluster, right? I'm gonna make a little tick mark there. I've done my chain for the corner, I'm gonna do a tick mark there. Next up, I need, a, I need a cluster here for the side. My pin is stuck in the yarn. No idea why that just activated that device that's sitting next to me. I apologize for that noise. <laughs> Wonders of living with technology, friends. All right, so we're going to do our cluster here. All right, now keep in mind, we've got that corner space right there that we can easily identify. So we're working here. I've done this corner. I don't need a corner for the next one. I just need a space to put a cluster in for the next row. I'm going to chain one. Whether you chain one between the clusters, that's entirely up to you, friends. Need to go here and do a cluster. One, two, and three. Scooch our stitches down a little bit right there. Okay. So I've done this one. I need another chain space or another space between the clusters. So if you're not chaining, keep a note of where that is. I'm going to go ahead and chain one. We're going to do another cluster, right? But that's not my corner, so I only need one chain between the two. Do the cluster. Okay, scooch those stitches down a little bit. Now, I'm up to my corner, so I need extra chain spaces to make that corner round out. A chain three. I'm going to do my corner. And when I say do my corner, I mean do my end piece here. 
that is going to be between these these chain spaces. I've done that one. I've done that one. Now I need to do my next chain space on the bottom. So that's another chain three. And again, you can chain two, you can chain seven. I don't, it doesn't matter to me how many you chain. We just need that extra room in there to get clusters on the following rounds into that section. Then I'm going to do my cluster because I'm up to the next cluster after my chain space here. One, two, three. There's my cluster, right? So to mark that off, I'm up to a chain space. Chain one. Scoot your stitches around if you need to. Totally cool. I've done my chain space. Now I need a cluster. There's two double crochets and the third for the cluster. Okay. Now I need my chain space. Now it's always helpful to do a spot check to make sure you know where you are in your pattern. So let's stop for a second and look at our, our rectangle here. Right. It's already starting to look like our example. Can you see that? Right. So I've got now two side clusters here. One, two, I need one more. On this side, I've got one, two, three. So I need to ma make this side match. I need one more side cluster. So I'm going to, what is happening with that yarn? I don't know. We're going to do our cluster. One, two, Let's fix that. See, even the experts have to fix a stitch every once in a while. All right. One, two, and three. So I've done our third side cluster. Now I need my chain space to go back to the original cluster. All right. So I'm going to chain three. Then I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that original chain three that you see here. Whether or not you get two loops on your hook, whether you get one loop, whether you just go in between the stitches, I don't care what you do. It's your blanket. However you want to do it, as long as it's consistent throughout your rows, it doesn't matter. People make a big deal out of that. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So I'll go through that stitch. There we go. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit. And we're going to look at it again, just so I can show you what I'm talking about here, right? So after this first round... Looks a little funky, doesn't it? It looks a little strange, right? Doesn't quite look like this yet, right? That's okay. Keep going. Keep adding rows onto this. We're going to use our diagram to reference back onto this. Let's mark that off as something that we've already done here so we don't get lost. We're going to keep adding rows to this. And as you add rows to this, it's going to continue to flatten out, right? So for my next row, row two, I'm going to chain three and I'm going to turn. That puts me immediately into this corner space. Now, corners we know from the regular granny. We need two clusters and a chain space between for the corners. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to complete this first cluster because that chain three counts as a double crochet. Scooch it over a little bit. Chain two. And we're going to add in a cluster right here. Now, I did chain two in this corner. Why? Because this is going to make the shape that we need for the corner, and it's going to be able to fit in here with the others around that original chain, now that I've done the chain three in the first row. Next up, we have our side. You might have to pull your stitches apart to see where you're going next, or if you didn't chain, Count your double crochets and go between the third and the fourth double crochet here. I'm going to go ahead and chain one for that corner space. And again, that's just for example purposes. You do not have to do that if you make a granny square in a different way. Totally your choice. But I now have my cluster on the side here with a chain space. Okay. 
We're going to continue on because I have another side space here. I've done my chain one. Let's do the cluster inside that chain space. Okay. Now we're up to that corner, that chain three corner. We know from the original granny square that we need to do two clusters with a chain space between. But to get to that corner, I'm going to chain one. So we're not quite in that corner yet. Now we are. Now I can do my two double crochets, two, two, two double crochet clusters, excuse me, in this corner. There's one. I'm going to chain two. We're going to do that second cluster inside that space two and three so it looks a little wonky see it looks a little wonky bear with me here friends just keep going i promise you it's going to work out just fine now we are on that side and we have not encountered this yet but we need to increase on this side because the blanket's going to continue to grow which means we need to add clusters on this side so if you're chaining between your clusters on the side here you're going to continue to do that on the short side if you're do not doing that and you're skipping that chain, just go right into another corner in this chain three space. I'm going to chain one because I'm ch I'm chaining between these clusters on the side. Right? I'm going to do another corner here. Two and three. There's my first cluster. I chain two to make the space. And now we're going to do another cluster. All right. We're back onto our side. So I'm going to chain one. I'm going to go into the, the chain space from the rail below. Make a cluster. A chain one because we're still on that side. Go into the chain space from the row below and make a cluster. Now, what do we have here? This is our corner space. Just like the other corners, I need to chain one to get there. And then I'm going to do my two clusters with the chain space between. Right, two and three. All right, there we go. Oops, let's not split the yarn. Okay, so we are back now at our top corner, but we need to make a space so we can increase in the following row because the blanket has to grow in size. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one. Then we're going to slip stitch back in the top of that chain three because we are back at the original stitching that we did for that round. And again, whether you get the two loops, whether you go for one loop, or you go through the space, I don't care what you go. Do what you need to do. I usually take my hook and put it in the middle of that center V right there and grab whatever I grab. Two loops, six loops, I don't care. As long as I connect together, we're all good, right? So let me just continue in fashion adding our clusters into the spaces and doing our corners in the corner spaces, just like a regular granny square we would do. So I'm going to continue this row. I'm going to go off camera and finish it. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to show you how I would cinch this center in if I was going to do so, or you could leave it open. Totally your choice. Whatever your style is, whatever you like to do here, doesn't matter. But I'm going to continue this row, and I will see you in just a bit. All right, friends, I have finished the stitching of this row. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to take uh, cut off this yarn for this example. We'll weave in this end. But as I was mentioning, it looks a little wavy, a little strange, right? As we cinch in this center, it's going to pull in those sides a little bit. And as you continue to work on the square itself, it'll be a new rectangle shape, right? 
We didn't have to do anything weird with the chain. Didn't have to do anything weird with working in the back bump and the front loop. None of that. We just went around the chain like we usually do. We just added extra chains and clusters. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Take our example out of the way here. So let's weave these ends in. I'm not going to be too precious about this because this is just an example. Uh, but it'll get it out of our way so we don't have to look at it. You know, because heaven forbid we see something imperfect on YouTube. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I apologize. The snark is real with me today. All right. So we're just going to uh, sew that in a little bit right there. Get that out of our way. Take that off. Okay. Now this center, we have already worked this yarn all the way around the inside of this square. And if you wanted to, let me let me hide that out of the way a little bit here. If you wanted to, you could leave your blanket like that and leave it open. Eventually, what will happen is as you continue to work, this will will shrink in a little bit. The weight of the blanket is going to keep the edges straight for you. And you're going to continue to have that rectangular shape. But you just have this little gap in the middle. So you can either leave it like this, friends, or you can do what I like to do. I'm going to take the end of the tail that we had from the previous round, right? We've already stitched around it once before, so we don't have to worry about securing this end in. This is already good to go, right? But we are worried about cinching this together a little bit, right? So this is going to take a little bit of practice for you to do if you've never done this before, right? But this is what I do inside this bump inside this little ridge here. You can feel the original chain. We're going to try to whip stitch around that chain on both sides. So I'm starting from this side here. I'm going to choose as soon as I get my needle in the right place, I'm going to choose to stitch close by. I'm going to stick that needle in there and try to feel around and see if I can't grab that original chain looks like I did. Sounds good to me. All right. Just gonna poke that through on the other side through that chain and whip stitch it around, All right? Pull that a little tight. I'm gonna go to the next stitch, grab some of the chain with the needle, grab some of the chain with the needle, whip stitch it around. And you're just gonna keep going through as you're securing this tail in just to make that flatten out a little bit, close up. It gets easier as you work down the chain. Doesn't have to be perfect because friends, listen, when you lay the blanket down flat, you're not gonna see it. You're not gonna see it. I'll do one more stitch right here in the corner. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and knot that because why not pull that tight? Then we can weave this in through the center if we like just to get it out of our way. I'll let you choose your weave-in method of choice. I'm gonna leave it there because this is not going to be an actual blanket blanket. It's just an example for the channel. Snip that off. And as you can see, we have now closed in that gap. Very simply, right? Now, if you do a better job of whip stitching than I do, it's gonna look much more like this one because this one I did a very good job of. This one, not so much, but. <laughs> It is entirely your choice, friends. You can leave it open like we saw before, or you can close it shut. And that, my friends, is how Lucas makes a granny rectangle without the chain center looking weird. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it has been helpful to you. If it has, do let me know in the comments. I'm going to stab my little needle buddy right there. I'm going to make some of these for the channel very soon as well. Uh... <laughs> Until next time, friends, I hope you've had a great time. I hope you've learned something today. If you have any tips or tricks or want to tell me that I did something wrong, do please reach out in the comments. I'm happy to take any feedback you give me. But this is just my recipe for a granny rectangle where the center doesn't look strange. <laughs> Until next time, my friends, thank you and happy stitching.